Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Now, as I mentioned in the last presentation, for this month, for October and the Halloween season, I have some special tricks and treats lined up for you. This is the time of year when all of the TV networks and shows do all of their Halloween and horror specials. But as I also mentioned, I want to stay within this channel's niche, which is crime dramas and a few mysteries, most of which fall under film noir. So how do I do both? How do I still do Halloween specials but without bringing you horror movies? And I think I have an answer. For each presentation this month, I will be bringing you crime dramas and mysteries starring the era's iconic horror actors. Actors who today seem to only be remembered for their iconic monster roles, or at the very least, are only remembered as only ever having been horror actors. They were, regrettably, typecast into the horror genre. But they were capable of so much more and should have been remembered for so much more. So each week, I will do a spotlight on an actor in one of the few precious films in which they were finally given a chance to break out of the horror typecast, or maybe they simply made the movie before they were typecast into horror. Tonight's spotlight will be on Boris Karloff. And for example, I'll just ask you this question point blank. Have you ever seen a Boris Karloff movie that wasn't a horror movie? For most viewers in today's era, the answer is no. But for you, after tonight, the answer will be yes. Tonight's picture is from 1931. The Criminal Code, starring Walter Houston, Phillips Holmes, Constance Cummings, and of course, Boris Karloff. Now, Karloff is certainly best remembered for his iconic role playing the, playing the monster in 1931's Frankenstein. Yes, it came out the same year as tonight's picture. Frankenstein came out later in the year after the release, after the release of tonight's picture. And uh, uh, in, in this picture, just so you know, he's not playing the lead. He's in a support role, but still very prominent throughout the film nonetheless. And uh, you'll recognize him pretty quickly. He's still got that short, straight bangs haircut, you know, very similar to what he wore in Frankenstein, only without all of the green makeup. So, from 1931, The Criminal Code. Let's roll the picture. You ain't got nothing. 
Hunts Precinct, Police Station, Sergeant Harris talking. Double peanut for yeah. 300. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Where'd you get that 300 that? business? That only counts 80. Shut up, you guys, till I get this. You're What's crazy. That? I didn't meld them separate. Yeah. Separate or together, Where? it only counts 80. Yeah. What are you doing, Wilson? Oh, don't be like There's that. There's been a fight down in Spelvin's Cafe. Somebody's hurt bad. Get going. Go on, call up Rudy Schultz over the corner. Yes, we'll see what he tells you. I don't Rudy care Schultz. what Rudy Schultz said. I say it counts yeah. 300. You, you owe me 42 cents. All right. Go on, I don't owe you a nickel. You owe me 42 cents. Come on, you guys. Both Andy is Parker's son. He's liable to die. And me with 150 ton. What good had it done you? You wouldn't know how to play oh, them anyway. Call up Rudy Schultz. Listen, I don't care if Rudy Schultz invented Pinochle. Look it up in the book. Oh, yeah? Yes. Well, Rudy wrote the book. Well, that 300 wrote. business. All right, Jim Spelman's cafe. I'll tell you something about Pinochle. Now, if you leave the beat. Say, listen. When we get back off this call, I'm going to have Rudy draw you up a set of rules. I don't care about Rudy's rules. By my rules, you owe me 42 cents. That's you all over. Arbitrary. I don't know what arbitrary means, but you still owe me 42 cents. Took a few lessons from Rudy, you might know something. Nothing got nothing to do with the 40 cents. Oh, I know. Yes, you do. I know. Hello, Mac. Get the computer. Hi, Mac. Hi, Spelvin. I don't know how to get in. Didn't see a thing. If the thing was ordered. Keep your shirt on, Tony. We'll get to you. How is he, Doc? Oh, hello, Doyle. Maybe you'll pull through, but I wouldn't bet on it. What is he hit with? A water bottle. Hmm. Who done it? The kid over there. Drinking? Yeah. Parker and the kid both. How about a kid? Well, I don't know. We were just dancing and... I didn't mean to do it. I didn't... Oh, yeah, sure. The bottle just slipped out of your hand. Oh, no, sir. He kept putting his hands on her and... I've got nothing to do with it. I'm going to get out of here. Oh, no, sister. Stick around. Well, what for? I hardly know these people. Oh, you've got plenty of other witnesses, and besides, I don't feel very well. That's too bad. Come on, let's go. Oh, but let me call my house. I want to get my lawyer. I bet you keep that guy pretty busy. Hi, boy. If you don't want to take my word for it, I'll get you 18 other guys to prove that I'm right. That'd be 18 steps to say, please. Come on. Come on. Come on. Break it out of here. Come on. Clear out of here. Come on. I don't uh, he care what Rudy Schultz told you. You owe me 42 cents and I want my money. That's your biggest trouble. All right. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, hello, Joe. Yeah, did he make any statement? Yeah? Yeah? No, no, no. Let, let the police notify the coroner. That's right. All right, goodbye. Sit down. Never mind that. Pull down the shade. What's your name? Merwin Fontaine. What's your real name? Gertrude. Gertrude what? Gertrude Williams. Yeah. Ever been arrested? Oh, no, sir. Honest, I haven't. All right, I'll take your word for that. Now, tell me everything that happened last night and don't make any mistakes. Yes, sir. Well, I was just walking down the street. And what street? What time? Market Street, about 11 o'clock. I was only looking in the store windows. Yeah. And... Go on. And the young man came up and spoke to me. Ever seen him before? Oh, no, sir. Honest, I hadn't. Go on. Well, at first I was insulted. Never mind that stuff. All I want is the facts. What did he say? He said he'd only been in town a short time, and it was his birthday, and he was lonesome. And would I go someplace to dance with him? I didn't see any harm in that. Huh. You ever see that before? Yes, sir. That, that's what he hit him with. Where'd you see it? At Spelvin's. Who suggested that joint? 
He did. And he learned his ropes pretty quick for not being in town long, eh? Guess he did. Now, who suggested that joint? I don't remember. Maybe I did. Yeah. That's possible. All right, go on. Well, we danced a while, and we had some ginger ale. Nothing else? Some gin. Where'd you get the gin? The waiter brought it. Oh, you knew the waiter. You'd been there before. He got it for you. Is that it? Yes, sir. But anybody can get gin there. Yeah, but the boy didn't have it. He didn't know. That was your idea. Yes, sir. But we both drank it. Yeah. All right, go on. This... This Mr. Parker got fresh with me on the floor. You knew Parker? I'd seen him. Ever been out with him? Yeah. All right, what did he do? He wanted me to come over to his table. When I wouldn't, he got sore and he called me a name. That's what started everything. The young boy I was with, he said, you've insulted this lady. He meant me. And then Mr. Parker reached back into his hip pocket. It was just for his handkerchief. He didn't have nothing else. And then the boy, the boy picked that up. And he struck him before anybody could stop him. He was screaming like a madman. Gee, I did my best to... All right, Gertie, that's all. Come back here at 5 o'clock. Yes, sir. And Gertie, don't do any talking. Keep your mouth shut. Yes, sir. And all the witnesses, Lou? Me, seven, six, seven. Yes, that's all. Seven witnesses, and they all check on material points. Open and shut, eh? Like a knife. Yeah? Yeah. No, I can't tell yet. Call me up at six o'clock, and I'll give you a statement. Yeah, goodbye. Yellow press. How oh, they love the smell of blood. Yeah. They're all alike. They'll squeal themselves deaf over this. An old fed Parker spends more money on advertising than any man in this town. That's right, Mr. Brady. I never thought of that. Yeah. And an election coming on. <laughs> Bring the boy in. Yes, sir. All right. You. Come on. Wait out here, Mike. Oh? Yeah. What's the matter? You think we're asleep down here? I'm... I'm taking personal charge of the case. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be lucky if he doesn't hang. Yeah, goodbye. Sit down, kid. I'd, I'd rather stand, Have sir. Have a cigar? No, thank you. Cigarette? No, sir. Won't you smoke? Well, yes, sir, but I, I don't care to now. Yeah? What's your name? Robert Graham. Yeah? You ever call you Bob? Yes, sir. How old are you, Bob? I was 20... yesterday. Well, you celebrated, didn't you? Stranger in town? I've been here a month. My home's in Hood Valley. Yeah? What you been doing here? Well, I... I was a clerk at Price and Hatton's, the broker. Any friends here? Parents living? My mother. Yeah? Have you been arrested before? No, sir, I haven't. Yeah? Well, Bob, you're in a jam. Yes, sir. Young Parker died this afternoon. Like a little drink? No, sir. Have you got a lawyer? Well, the firm I work for sent their lawyer to see me this morning. Yeah? What did he say? He... He told me not to talk. Yeah? Then don't you say a word. You haven't said anything yet that'll do you any harm. Please, sir, what do you think? 
Tough luck, Bob, but that's the way things go. That's the way they break sometimes. You gotta take them the way they fall. Yes. Kid's got a nice personality. Smart criminal lawyer like Shapiro or Sullivan could make it tough for us. That's right, Mr. Brady. Say, if that kid belonged to me, I'd make a plea of self-defense and fight it out. Parker didn't have a gun. Thought he had. He thought he was fighting for his life. It's what you think that counts. And he was full of gin. Suppose he was. What of it? I'd get a disagreement at worst. A year delay, a new trial. The witnesses would fade away. They always do. The whole mess would get cold. The papers would have something else to yap about. I'd get him off. He'd never serve a day. I guess you could, Mr. Brady. Yeah. Thing like this liable to happen to anyone. You or me or anyone. It's just a rotten break, that's all. Yeah. Graham's attorney, Mr. Brady. All right, show him in. Lou, you better get those notes transcribed. Okay. Call up the newspapers and tell them we promise a quick conviction and, uh... Uh, well, you know, the usual baloney. Yes, sir. Mr. Brady? Yeah. I am uh, Leonard Nettleford of Nettleford, Lambskin, and Crow. Pleased to meet you, sir. Sit down. Thank you. Have a smoke? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, we are attorneys, Mr. Brady, uh, for Price and Hatton, the stockbroker. Yeah? It appears that a young man who has been in their employ uh, is involved in an unfortunate affair. Yeah? Uh, Mr. Price asked me, as a personal favor, to interest myself in the case. Well, I'm glad you came over, Mr. Nettleford. I'll be perfectly frank with you. That's my way of doing business. Thank you very much. Now, the case, as I see it, is, uh, is open and shut like a knife. The boy Graham picks up a uh, frail on the street. Uh, I uh, beg your pardon? Frail. Jane. The gal. Uh, oh, oh, yes. He takes her to Spelman, the notorious joint. The drunken brawl. Graham kills Parker. Confirmed by the statement of seven or more eyewitnesses. We're going to ask for a verdict of second-degree murder. Murder? Dear me, Mr. Brady, that, that sounds very hard. It's the law of the state. You'll find it in the code. Uh, I have not had occasion to consult the criminal code in 20 years. Well, the criminal code is my Bible, Mr. Nettleford. Uh, yes, uh, I suppose so. <laughs> uh, but uh, this boy... Uh, this poor unfortunate boy, he, uh, he meant no harm, Mr. Brady. It was an accident. He is sorry. Yes, he's sorry, and Parker's dead. Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I quite understand that. Uh, but uh, a misunderstanding, an, an unguarded moment. These wretched things do happen. Perhaps you have a boy of your own, Mr. Brady. No, I have a girl. Uh, yes, yes. Well, it seems very hard. Tell you what I'll do, Mr. Nettleford. If you want to plead him guilty to manslaughter, I'll let it go at that. Uh, manslaughter, uh, Just what does that involve? Maximum sentence of ten years. But well, ten years is a long time, Mr. Brady. It's a big piece out of a boy's life. Good Lord, man, what do you want? There's a boy lying on a slab in the morgue. There's a big piece out of his life. All of it. But somebody's got to pay for that. An eye for an eye. That's the basis and foundation of the criminal code. Somebody's got to pay. But drunkenness is no excuse for the violation of the law. Therefore, according to the just verdict of this jury, I sentence you, Robert Graham, to serve a term of ten years in state's prison. Next case. Your Honor, the next case is the Red Papers Corporal. They have been the court. My boy, I'm sorry. All right, son. Come on. Well, Mr. Grady, the best man won, I'm afraid. Yeah. And I, 
I want to thank you for all your courtesy. That's all right. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Locking up the animals for the night. What are you thinking about, kid? Uh, I was just figuring out how many hours there are in six years. 52,560, in case it interests you. Tomorrow will be 24 or more. Wouldn't it be swell if you could sleep for a year at a time? What's the matter, kid? Ah, oh, it's a jute mill. Noise and the rotten, filthy dust. No. You ought to be used to it by now. Used to it? I'll never get used to it. You can wash it out of your ears and your nose. How do they expect you to wash it out of your lungs? <laughs> Oh, that's where I get a break. You've only got one lung left. Scram. Check us, kid. No. Oh. oh, come on. Sit in. Sit in. It'll do you good. Forget it, kid. Forget it. It's tough. Huh? I know it's tough. Are you young? Take a slant at me. Here I am on the shady side of 40. At the start of a 20-year stretch. How many hours is that? Never mind, never mind. You don't have to figure them out. I'm not going to stay half of them here. Let me tell you guys something. I'm going to make a break for it. You are? Why not? It's my only chance. When? I don't know. A crush out takes time. But I'm going, and I'm going soon. Take me with you, Jim. Now, wait a minute, kid. It's a long shot. A gamble. Nine out of ten come back. Yeah. And eight out of the nine come back on a stretcher. I don't care. If I can just get one breath of air outside. If I can get one good square meal. If... If I could just see a woman's face again. I dream about those things, Jim. Night after night. Oh, dreams. How about you, Galloway? Not me. I got an appointment with a guy. What do you mean? Did you know I was in for 20 years, don't you? Yes. Well, I done eight. And they let me out on parole. And I went into a speakeasy. I wanted to wash the taste of this slut they call the grub out of my mouth. I had a drink. Just one. And somebody saw me take that drink and squeaked. They sent me back for the rest of my joke. Just for it? Yeah. Twelve years for one lousy glass of beer. Well, the guy that squealed is in here, too. Oh, 
I got an appointment with him. And 12 years to keep it in. Shh. School. Telegram. Oh. Maybe it's an invitation to a party. Your move, kid. She... She used to come to see me every Friday. My mother was awful nice. You're moved, kid. You know what she wanted to do? She wanted to come down here and live with me somehow. What do they want to punish her for? Oh, she knew it wasn't your fault. She knew your being in here was a rotten deal, didn't she? Sure she did. That's what killed her. Your move, kid. I'm human, ain't I? That was my mother, wasn't it? I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out! Steady, kid, steady. Your move. All right, it's my move. It's my move out of here. I'm gonna get out. You gonna get out in a box that bleeds and hears you? Oh, that's great. That's where my mother is, isn't it? In a box. They put her there, Miss Bob. Listen, listen, that's what I've been doing for six years. I'm sick and tired of listening. I'm going to get out. Wipe down, wipe down. Now they're all going to hear me. Hey, let me in. Give me two seconds. my mother. My mother is Bob. Why are you in there? Why are you in there? Why are you in there? Well, where's the big noise that's got to get out of here? I'm sorry I yelled like that, Captain, but I felt sick, see? Don't lie to me, it wasn't you. Cut out that Christian martyr stuff and kick that rat over to me. Oh, listen, Captain, it was just hysterics. We've got him under control now. He'll be all right. Yeah, well, no con under me can yowl that way and throw this pen into a panic. Kick him over here. Come in and get him. Please, Captain, please. The kid got bad news. His mother died. Yeah. Well, another yap out of this cell and all three of you will go into the hole. Okay, get some water. You don't like that fellow Gleason, do you? He's the guy I got the appointment with. No kidding. Get your water. Did I yammer? Sure did. Ten of baritone bass. Who hit me? Brother Galloway. Well, thanks, Cat. Okay, kid. <laughs> Got a cigarette, kid.
same, Mac. Says she that Brady comes in tomorrow. Wonder what kind of a warden he'll make. A tough one, I'll bet. Yeah, and he ought to be in a sweet frame of mind after losing out for governor. I'll bet he runs these cons ragged. And won't they like it? <laughs> Especially coming from him. Say, that's right. I never thought of that. Hey, Lunch, did you hear the screws? Yeah, I ain't missing nothing, Tex. That's the guy that sent me up. Yeah, me too. Railroaded me for doing nothing. One. Hmm. Hey, guys, ready to come tomorrow. Our pal. Hey, how you gonna fight being butler to the warden now? Not so bad. I guess you'll be glad to see your old friend, eh, kid? Oh, I don't care. I used to lie awake nights figuring how I'd get that guy. Now, oh, what difference does it make? He might as well be warden as anyone else. Yeah? Well, his others don't feel the same way. Yeah? Yeah, he's here. All right. New warden's here, Captain. You're wanted up in the office. Okay. You'll find this a nice office, Mark. Warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Centrally located, nice and pleasant. Come in. Oh, hello, Gleason. How do you do, Mr. McManus? How's the prison board this morning? Fine, thanks. This is your new boss, Mr. Brady. Mart, this is Gleason, best yard captain in the prison business. Glad to know you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Meet my daughter. How do you do? Oh, I'm pleased to meet you. The housekeeper, Miss Ryan. Pleased to meet you. How do you do? Look here, Mark. There's your boys down there. Yeah? Mary. 2,500 of them. Right, Gleason? 2,552, uh, Mr. McManus. That mob, I'll bet you sent up about uh, a thousand of them yourself, Mark. Did you ever think of that? Yeah. Tex, there's Brady now up in the window. Yeah, the yellow rat. I wish he'd come down here. Yes, he sent me up too. Me too. My friend. My friend. Yeah! Yeah! Gleason? They call that yammering, sir. They do it when they're sore about something or somebody. Yeah? You better go down. I'll go with you. I wouldn't go if I were you, Mark. Better stay here. Yeah, why? Sounds like this show was staged for your benefit. That's right, Mr. Brady. I have a hunch that's what it is. Yeah? Kind of a protest, eh? Yeah. You won't be very welcome down there, Mark. Better let Gleason go. Yeah? Well, let me tell you something. I've been taking the taxpayers' money for a long time. When my name was on the district attorney's door, I was district attorney. It was my job to get convictions, and I got it. If I'd been elected governor, I'd have governed. Maybe that's why I wasn't elected. Well, here I am, warden. And that's what I'm going to be. Warden. 
All right, sweetheart. Yes, Dad. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Brady. I'll get some dodging machine guns and we'll... You stay here, Gleason. This seems to be a matter between me and the boys down there. We've got to settle it ourselves. He's sending me up. Pipe down, you guys. Pipe down. Hello, Tex. Hi, Mr. Brady.
Where do you work? Jute mill. How long have you been there? Six years. Hmm. You can go. Shoot me. Six years. Hello, Doctor. I wish to speak with you about a prisoner. Yeah? I don't like to trouble you with the cases that come before me. They're nearly all alike. But this one is different. This is a case of a man in the shoot me. A boy, in fact. And he is breaking down. What do you mean? I mean, uh, morale. Yeah? Why? Why? Who can tell? Environment, mechanical occupation, starvation, and the lack of the other half of the world. Heaven knows what. Yeah? It is all down on this car, uh, the physical part of it. I have seen this boy, Vaughan. His character, I mean. Only a glimpse that's true, but I have seen it. He isn't a criminal at all. A casual offender, perhaps, but far from hopeless. Pity. A great pity. There is something there that is worth saving. And it's almost gone. Graham. Robert Graham. Yeah? Well, what do you want me to do? I would suggest a change of occupation or environment. Yeah? I think you should see this boy yourself, Ward. All right, I'll see him. Set him up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Five four sixty five, Warden. Yeah. Go on, get over there. Doctor Reinwolf said you wanted him brought here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Your name's Robert Graham. Ever call you Bob? You asked me that once before. Huh? It's the Parker case, Mr. Brady. Parker? Yeah, young Parker who was killed six years ago. Dad. Huh? Oh, you're getting pretty stylish, aren't you, Mary? Yes. All right, Al. I'll be there in a little while. Change of occupation and then barn. Drive a car, son? Yes. Yeah. Oh, hello, Doctor. How do you do, Miss Mary? How's Katie? Oh, she's all right. We'll have her out tomorrow. Summer cold. Uh, no, she isn't young anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think the prison depresses her. Yes, I know. Poor dear. You don't uh, seem to mind it. I? Why should I? Mm, why should you, indeed? You know, I want to congratulate you on the good influence you have here. How's that? 
The miracle you have performed. Miracle? The reconstruction of a man. Well, I don't think I quite understand you. I mean, the man who drives your father's car. Oh. Well, what have I to do with that? It's a strange phenomenon. It takes a prison six years to break a man, and something mends him in three short months. And is he mended, do you think? What shall I do with these, Miss Mary? Oh, you can put them all in the kitchen, Graham. Is he mended? Take a look into his eyes sometime, and then tell me. May I help you with anything? Oh, well, I think Galloway will. Well, Galloway's off today, miss. Everybody's down at the ball field. Oh, yes, this is the day of the game, isn't it? Well, you can peel some potatoes for me. Sure. Here's a knife. Thank you. Don't you like baseball, Graham? Well, yes, miss. I played with the Hood Valley Club, but we had a pretty good team the last year. Really? You should be out there today. It'd be good for you. I wish you'd told me I could have driven the car just for one day. Oh, no, no. I'd rather drive it myself. Why do you say that? Am I such a terrible driver, Graham? Oh, no, I, I, I didn't mean that, but I think perhaps it's good for me to drive the car. It might help me later on. You mean you might make your living driving the car? Well, I don't know just how I am going to make my living. I've thought a lot about it, too. Do you... Do you think it'll make much difference to people? What? That I've... that I've been in prison. I don't see why it should. When the thing's over, it's done. Well, that's my idea, too, but... they don't seem to think that in here. They say that's why so many who go out... come back. Would... would it make much difference... to you? No. I, I don't think it would. I think you better let me finish those, Graham. Oh, Graham, by the way, about a week ago I lost a handkerchief, one with a blue border. You didn't happen to see it, did you? Why, I, um... It was from my aunt. I'd hate to lose it. Why, well, I'm sorry, miss. I'd better put the car away and... Graham. I'd like to have my handkerchief, please. But I... Please. Remember I told you about making a break for it? Sure. Well, everything's set for tomorrow night. You still want to go with me? Well, no, Jim. I... Oh, I understand. You've got something to stay for. Jim, who else is it on? Three of us. Tets, Runch, and me. Runch? I'm not wild about it myself, but Tets let him in. It's too late now. Listen, Jim, that guy's a stool pigeon. He's no good. Just as wrong as they make him. Well, he's too dangerous to leave behind. Yeah. Just how you going to work him? Well... We got a con in the turnkey's office. 
to take our numbers off the cell book. And tomorrow night when the bell goes, and while they're checking up, I don't know. Why do you need us here? I don't know. Tex, are you sure that guy? Come on, let's get out of here. One seventy two. One seventy two. One seventy one. Three. One seventy one. Three. One seventy two. Three. They've got a chance now. Yeah. I wish that guy Runch wasn't in it. squealed. Come on inside. Nice and warm. Nice, cozy dungeon. Come on, take him down. All right, take him. Well, I got about that. Yes, sir. A little late this morning, aren't you, Barbara? Yes, sir. I was at the funeral chapel this morning, sir. Oh, yeah. For fails, eh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I guess the boys feel pretty badly about that, don't they? Yes, sir. Nobody likes a squealer. Yeah. But I know you. You do. Mm, your name is uh, Red Fleischner, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Flyfer, eh? I am. Mm hmm. I sent you up, didn't I? You did. What for? A couple of guys' throat. Tickled to death. You're a hero. The way you stopped that attempt to, uh, well, I'm telling you, they won't be able to keep you in this dump much longer. <laughs> You'll go up where you belong, the governor's mansion. Well, maybe it'll break like that. Maybe it will at that. Oh, Thaddeus Parker with all his dough can't keep you down, Mark. Hot towel, sir. Uh, never mind, uh, Robert. I want to talk to Mr. McManus. Yes, sir. How are you? Hi. Say, do you know who that barber is? Yeah, sure I do. You better lay off and grow a beard. Hey, uh, you got the report for the board ready? You'll find it there on my desk, Mac. Well, good. Hey, Mark. What have you done to that guy that squealed? Who, Runch? Yeah. So listen, you've got to get him off my hands. Pardon, parole, transfer, anything. Well, I'll do what I can. Where is he? Well, I got him in here as my clerk. Sleeps in the alcove there, and I have his food sent in. Doesn't set a foot outside. Oh, that's a good idea. You can't be too careful. That guy's life wouldn't be worth a nickel if those other birds got at him. Isn't worth a nickel anyway. He's petrified, scared stiff. Like a rabbit in a trap. Yeah. Hurts me to look at him. Had him here since the day before yesterday, but... <sighs> gotten on my nerves. Can't sleep at night thinking of him. You gotta get him out of here, Mac. Now you gotta do it. I know exactly how you feel. It would be bad for you to have a killing now. 
just when you're on the crest of the wave and ringing up a good record, why the newspapers would turn on you like that. A man that doesn't only that. I'm responsible. I'm responsible for that man's life. I'll do all I can. And in the meantime, Mark, I think I'd get rid of Mary for a few days, you know, just uh, until this thing blows over. I thought of that myself. I'm going to send her up to Aunt Ellen's for a week. Ah, that's a good idea. Now, i got to beat it. Hey, Mac, oh. don't forget to work on that parole for Graham. No, I won't. Mac. Yeah? Next time you come up, you can bring me a safety razor, will you? Huh? Oh, oh all right. Come on. Come on, Mac. <laughs> now... I thought that was cool, where that guy is rattling through that list of slang terms for women. Frame, Jane, gal. <laughs> and I have to say this, frame, that's a new one to me. I had never heard frame before. Uh, my favorite slang term for back in that day is dame. And I would like to know, you know, that list of terms, were, were, were these considered nice, innocent slang terms for women? Or were they considered dirty, derogatory slang terms for women? I guess it just depends on the tone in which you say it. Now, what we got going here is that Brady, you know, playing the district attorney, uh, played by Walter Houston. You know, he sends Graham to prison on that 10-year murder rap for having killed that guy. But really, it was just in self-defense. He seems to feel a little remorseful about that. You know, now, as the, as the district attorney, he had to, he still had to do his job in prosecuting for it but he seems to be a little remorseful about it because he knows there were some mitigating circumstances behind it. And uh, then wouldn't you know, having been the DA, he runs for election for governor, loses the election, and then shortly after accepts an assignment to become warden of the prison, which is the same one that he sent Graham to. So here they are, brought back together once again. And then, <laughs> I tell you, I thought that was hysterical. That scene where he's getting that shave from the prison trustee barber, and he's leaning back, and you know, he's getting that straight razor shave, and he, uh, Asked the guy, hey, didn't I send you up? And the guy says, yeah. He said, what was it for? Murder for slitting a guy's throat. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, if you can lean back in a chair and get a shave with a straight razor from a guy you sent to prison on a murder rap for having slit a guy's throat, <laughs> That is one special kind of bold. <laughs> well, let's get back to the criminal code. Hello, Gats. Okay. Will you tell Miss Mary the car's here? Seems to me you're kind of enjoying your job. Sure I am. Why not? Yeah? Well, your real friends are still inside. I know that. Yeah, well, don't forget. I won't. You know, Jim thought a lot of you. That's why I'm giving you the office. Watch your step. What do you mean? I mean that someone's going to get that rotten squealer. Who, Roger? Who else? He didn't know what he was saying. Gleason. I know, I know. But he squealed, turned up his pals, and a man's dead. Somebody's got to pay for that. But how? How should I know? I'm only tipping. Something in the wind. So watch your step unless you want to get into a jam. 
I don't. I don't. But what? How? Keep clear of him and the corridor. I will. Thanks, Gats. Graham? Yes, miss. Is there anything you'd like to have me do and tell him for you? No, miss. Thank you. No one you'd like to have me see? Not now. My mother's dead. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. She used to come to see me every week. It sort of kept my courage up. Something to look forward to. Yes. Afterwards, I began to slip a little. It's awfully hard to make yourself believe that it's worthwhile to try. And you've got to do that, otherwise you'll break. They all think they got a rotten deal in there, and that's all they talk about. It gets under your skin in time and fills you with a bitterness, hate. Are you bitter? No, not now. I was, but I seem to see things more clearly now. You know... My father's trying to get you a parole. Yes, I know. I'm awfully grateful, but it doesn't seem to matter so much now. Why do you say that? I... I mean, if, if you stay. You know you don't mean that. Yes, yes, I do. Things aren't the way they were before at all. If I could just see you every day. Just see you. Be gone long? Only a week. Goodbye, Miss Mary. What's on your mind, Gleason? Plenty. Yeah? There's trouble brewing. Altogether too quiet out there since Shale's got it. Quiet, eh? Yes, no talking, no laughing. That's a bad sign, sir. Of course, I'm not giving him much chance to think it over. The guards have orders to keep him moving, but I don't like it. Yeah? I'll watch him. They'll gang up as soon as the guard passes on. Olivet, what did I tell you? Yeah, wake up the night detail. Get them out. Arm them with rifles and put them with your regular men. Better put a couple of sub Thompsons up there, too. Yes, sir. Gleason. Post an extra guard at the gate leading up here. Step the gang off and watch your step. Run, 215. Run, 215. Get 
that out. You ought to know better than that. Orange. Yes, sir. Put these away. Yes, sir. Why are you trembling like that? I... I don't know. Come on, Runch, pull yourself together. Safe feet of stone wall between you and the yard down there with iron gates, guards on either side. Yeah, but there's... there's all the clerks in the turnkeys office, sir. You think it likely they'd walk past my guards and climb my private stairs? No, sir. There's no one beyond there except my servants. Do you think they'd risk their easy jobs to say nothing of their necks for you? Come on, pull yourself together. No one can harm you here. But they'll get me, sir. They'll get me. I know they will. How? I don't know that. I wish I did. Oh, can't you get me out of here, sir? Doing all I can. I never meant to squeal. I couldn't help myself. I didn't know what I was saying. I was framed. Oh, you, you've got to get me out of here. I'm doing all I can, I tell you. A guy that squeals ought to have a break. A chance to save his life. A run for it. It's, it's like the death house. Waiting here. Uh, you're off your nut. Oh, you, you ought to get me out of here. I beat it down for South America, and I'd, I'd never come back here again. I swear I wouldn't, Warden. Oh, give me a break. A chance. All right, Ron, you can go. Take those along with you. Well, Bob, may I get off all right? Yes, sir. You told me you wanted me to come back here, sir. Yeah, that's right. Sit down. I want to talk to you about a parole I've been trying to get. You know, it isn't as easy as it sounds. There's over 2,500 men in here, and they all want me to do something. Yes, sir. Brunch, 215. Brunch, 215. Brunch, 215. Brunch, 215. Oh. Tea, madam? I wish you wouldn't sneak up on me like that. Great conscience, I'd rather do the work around here myself than have you around. I never see you coming, I never hear you coming. I just look up and, and there you are. I didn't order that, but I'll take it so long as it's here. Let's go. Yes, you do. 
You're down there in the yard. You know what's going on. You're holding out on me. Oh, oh have a heart, kid. Have a heart. Give me a chance. Go <laughs> find out what they're yelling for. I can't. The warden told me to stay here. You're lying to me. Just, just down the stairs and, and ask the guards down there. No. You're in on it yourself. No, I don't know anything, I tell you. Then, then just go out in the hall and, and listen, Bob. You, you might hear something. Please, I'd do that much for you. I'd do it for the dog. <laughs> Tea, madam. Some more tea, madam. No, thanks. Well, it isn't a pleasant sound. No, sir, it isn't. It drives the guards nearly crazy. Sometimes they keep it up all night, kicking about the grub or something. Yeah. And the guard, Leeson? Yeah, thanks. What do you make of it? I don't know, sir. Sometimes it's just pure orneriness. Then again, they pull a stunt like that to cover up something. Cover something. Brunch! Downstairs, quick. See the two guards at the gate. Get the fingerprint man up here right away. Okay, sir.
You didn't do this, did you, Bob? Oh, no, sir. Who did? I... Who did it? I don't know. Yeah? How long have you been sitting in here, Katie? Ever since Mary went to the train. You haven't been out of this room, not for an instant? Why, no. Why? Anybody go through here toward my office? No. How about Galloway, the butler? Galloway brought me some tea, but he went back into the kitchen. Yeah, you're sure about that? Yes. Why? Yeah. below don't know anything about it, sir. They didn't see anybody come up and they didn't see anybody go down. But they slipped across the corridor to get a look when the noise started. Yeah, then somebody could have used those stairs. That's the way it looks to me. They will round up Galloway and all my private servants for blood stains. Yes, sir. Quick, before they get a chance to get them all. Okay. Who did it, son? I don't know. You can't get away with that. You were in this room when that man was killed. No, no, sir. I wasn't here. What? I wasn't here. I went... Went where? No. What do you mean? Nothing. I... Nothing. And yet you say you don't know who did it. You're lying, Bob. You're lying to shield a murderer. What are you going to tell them at the inquest? Inquest? What are you going to tell them? What are you going to tell a coroner's jury, Bob? Nothing. You can't get away with that. The long arm of the law reached right through these gates and yanked you outside. It'll put you in a county jail. I got no jurisdiction then. I'll be just a witness in the box. What can I do? I know you didn't do it, Bob, but that won't prove it to them. They'll hang on you. No, no, they can't. I... Sit down, kid. Sit down. Come on, kid, now out with it. Out with it. Who did it? I can't tell. A man can do anything but squeal. I'll have to take my chance. Chance? You haven't got a chance. You're caught. You're in a net. You'll have to clear this up to save yourself. I can't. You must think fast. It may mean 10 or 20 years at best. I couldn't stand it. No, I'd rather die. Parole's up in town. It's due here any day. The prison board will cancel that. I didn't kill him. I've done nothing wrong. Time you've served for good behavior will be lost. That leaves you three more years to serve. Three years at least. It isn't fair. It isn't right. Come on, Bob. I can't keep you here with me. You'd go back to the jute mill. You... Oh, no, no. You haven't forgotten the smell of jute in six short months? No. You see, boy, you're... You're up against it. You've got to tell. Who killed that man? Come on, Bob. Think fast. Who killed him now? Who? Who? Quick. Who? Huh? Huh? And just tell me which way he came. From over there? Or there, Bob? You can't be doing any harm by that. I know he came one way or the other. It's just a detail that I'd like to know. From over there, Bob? Or there? Come on, be reasonable. It won't be violating your code to tell me that. I don't know. Yeah? Do you believe that I'm your friend and want to help you? I don't know. Well, I am. I swear I am. I haven't got another thought in this but you. I've got lots to lose myself. I was warden of that man. His safety was my job. His blood is on my head. The press will make me sweat for this, and there's an election coming on, but I'm not thinking of that, understand? Yes. Now, things have been tough for you. It was a rotten piece of luck that sent you here. You've got another now, but that's the way things break sometimes, you know. You've got to take them away they fall. See what I mean? Yeah. You see, you're up against it, boy. You're up against the wall. You're up against it stark and flat. There's only one out for you. You've got to tell. You've got to tell, Bob. Come on, now. Who killed that man, huh? Come on. Won't you, won't you come through? I can't. You trade your life away for a code made up by murderers and crooks to cheat the laws of honest men. You're not a crook. That's not your code. It's all I've had. No, no. This is your code and mine. Hold fast to it, Bob. You can't be faithful to them both. 
Stick to the law. Don't turn a crook. You're not one. Don't turn your back on this. Come on, Bob. Who killed that man? No, I can't tell. I can't. I can't forget so quickly what I've learned in here. I can't go back on the code. I think their code's right for them. And I can't go back on it. No. Why, I wouldn't be anything then. Don't you see? I, I'd be like that thing in there. No. Yeah. Well. What did you find, Beeson? Nothing. What did he say? Nothing. Well, we'll take that out of him. Come on. Wait a minute, son. I'll give you one more chance. Your parole will be here next week. You'll be outside these walls, free. Free to make a future for yourself. Free to come and go where you please. A home, a wife, kids. Free. Yeah? Or rot here in this cage for three or ten or twenty years. A rope around your neck, perhaps. The jute mill every day. Year in, year out. The smell of it that makes you sick. Jute! Jute! The dungeon now. A bucket meal each seven days. Cold slop with bread and water in between. No ray of light. No human voice. Black emptiness, that's all. Come on, Bob. No, for what? For what? The prison rules. The prisoner must obey. Who killed that man? Come on. Who killed him? Who? Who? Huh? Huh? All right, Beeson, lock him up. All right, come on. On your way. Come on, get out. He won't be so cocky in a week. Hey, no rough stuff with that boy. Let no one lay a hand on him, understand? All right. I've got to save him. I've got to save him from himself. He's got to tell. He must. He must. Sure. A week of bread and water in the dark will loosen up his tongue. Yeah? Sure. Fingerprint everything up here. The hall, the stairs, the corridor, the body there. Don't miss a bet. I've got to get that bird. I've got to get him. Yes, sir. Warden talking. Send the coroner here right away. Week of bread and water in the dark. bread and water? Yeah? Why, you won't have been here a week. Come on, get up. Get up! Get up! How do you like that cigar, Bob? Smells good, doesn't it? Have a cigarette. Yeah, that's all right. Go on. Go on, kid. Oh, no. Oh, isn't that too bad? Last match I had to. Yeah. Smoke tastes good after dinner, doesn't it, Bob? Especially after a good hot cup of coffee. Let's see what we have for dinner today. Oh, yes. Beefsteaks smothered with onion. Mashed potatoes. Country gravy. Gleason's pie. going too far, if you ask me. Yeah, and he's going out of here in a big way if the warden never gets wise to some of the stuff he's pulling. You bet. On the level, Bob, you're a sight. Uh, I bet you itch, don't you? Any nice girl would be scared to see you now. Must be kind of depressing down here, especially when you don't have to stay. I know a kid that's got a parole waiting for him up on the warden's desk. 
He could be out of prison in an hour, eating swell food, too. How about it, Bob? Huh? How about it? Who killed Runch? I don't know. Who killed Runch? I don't know. Who killed Runch? Come on, let me have it. Who killed him? I am dead. Who killed Runch? Come on, who killed Runch? Speak up, you rat. Speak up. Talk and get it. State's attorney for this district, and it's up to me to get some action. So far, there's been none. Now, I don't mind telling you that the situation's become intolerably embarrassing. Yeah? Yes, ever since this man was murdered, right here in your office, I've been under fire in the Metropolitan Press. Yeah? Well, it's not often that a young man gets a chance to crash into the city press like that. Yes, I appreciate that, Mr. Brady, but whether or not it's good publicity, I don't know. Anyway, I don't feel that I should take a chance. What with uh, an election coming up and... Yeah, yeah, I know. Now... There was a killing out here over a week ago. So far, there's been no inquest. The coroner's done his duty. He's been out here three times. We've sworn in a jury, packed them out here in a bus, and had to pack them back again. Each time, you've asked for a postponement. You wouldn't let us see this fellow, Graham. You refused to testify yourself. All we know about the case is what comes out in the newspapers. Yeah, and that's not much. Not much? A man's dead, and somebody's got to pay. An eye for an eye. That's the basis and foundation of our criminal code, Mr. Brady. That's the law. Yeah? You're not telling me. I am telling you. You've got to do something and do it quick. Yeah? Radio. Here, I just came in a frank and friendly spirit and laid my cards right down on the table. Now, I ask you as man to man, what are you going to do? Nothing. Just what do you mean by that? Just exactly what I say. Well, I want to tell you that you can't get away with it. Not a minute longer. There'll be no more delay. There's been a murder committed. Well, there's going to be an inquest, a trial, and a penalty. That's the law in this state. I don't know what your motives are. Motive? Why, you young whelp. Why, Mr. Brady, all I mean is... No matter what you mean, you've said too much. Now, I'll do some talking. Now, don't you try to tell me how to run my job. I learned this game when you were in the cradle. I'm moving heaven and earth to find the bird that turned this trick. Now, give me a chance. Lay off, will you? You and your coroner and your inquest. What do you do? You'll only ball things up. I'm only want to do my duty. I'm trying to serve law and justice. Justice? That's what I'm after, too. Justice. And that's what I'm going to get. The only thing that you'll do will be to indict an innocent boy. Now, lay off me, will you? And give me a chance. I'll work this thing out myself. Yeah, but when? How long will it take? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm very sorry, Mr. Brady, but you can't expect me to accept as vague an answer as that. Yeah? Well, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to report your unheard of conduct to the prison board and to the attorney general. I'm going to have an inquest here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I'll have you called on a subpoena. Yeah, I guess you can do that. I guess you can. Yeah. That's the law, Mr. Brady. Good day. That head. Fathead. Hello, Clark. Hi, Jerry. Who eats today? The kid, Graham. Yeah? Give me a spoon, will you? Sure. I see what you stuck in there. It was a knife. You gotta take that out of there. You're liable to get me into trouble. You won't get caught. Why won't I get caught? Well, they're liable to trace that knife right back here again. They can't trace it back. It's a shoemaker's knife. I've had it ever since I was in the shop. Oh, I see. Well, I ain't toting any knives around until I know what it's all about. See? For Graham. Graham. Not me, Cluck. I wouldn't be a part Listen, of anything like that. The kid's been in the hole a week. He kept his trap shut. If it had squawked, it'd have been out long ago. 
He deserves a break, and I'm going to see that he gets it. Yeah, but what good is a knife to him down there? Don't you see, stupid? It's an out. A two-way out. To end the torture oh, or... yeah. I see. You mean either him or Gleason, huh? Yeah, that's it. Shh. All right, Jerry. Yes, sir. Come on, let's go. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, Dad. It's like a breath of heaven to have you back here again. Take off your coat. McNamee, take Miss Mary's grips inside. The housekeeper will show you where. Yes, sir. Well, well. Come on now. Tell your old man all about you. Hey, what's the matter? What have you done with Robert Graham, Dad? Who told you about him? What have you done with him? Now, don't you worry about things you don't know anything about. Everything's all right. It's going to be. I want to know, Dad. And don't let the newspapers get your goat. I've been to the mat with them before. Yeah, I'll come out of this all right. Don't you worry about me. I'm not worrying about you, Dad. I'm worrying about him. Yeah? Why? For one reason, because you put him here. Who told you about that? Well, I know that's all. I've taken the trouble to find out everything about him. Yeah? Where is he? He's in the dungeon, Mary. What for? Technically, for shielding a murderer. Practically, to save his life, perhaps. What good is it to save a man if you destroy him while you're doing it? Yes, I've thought of that myself. Prisons are full of broken men, of broken minds and souls. What good is it to save a man for that? Well, he'd be better dead. Yes, I've thought of that, too. That boy was clean and fine and straight. What will happen to him when you break him? It's all right, Mary. I see your point. I thought of all that stuff myself. But what am I going to do? His parole is laying here. It's taken me months to get it. I want to get him out of here. I want to turn him loose. But he's tied my hands. I can't. You can. You must. Yeah? Well, what would you do? I'd set him free tonight. Why, you're just a kid. You don't know anything about these things. I do. I do. I'd set him free and then I'd fight for him. I'd get behind him and see him through. If he were free, he'd have a chance. He's done nothing wrong. He's only doing what he thinks is right. It's only what you think that matters. Yeah? A man like you could find a way to save him. Delays, disagreements, and whatnot. You know how those things are done. You've often told me of the things they've done to you. He'd be outside and free. He'd have a chance. You'd get him off. You know you would. Crazy, Mary. You know what they do to me for that? I tell you what they'd do. They'd bust me higher than a kite. I'm only hanging by a shoestring now. They're after me. They're only waiting for a chance. But if it's right... Right? Yeah? Right? You talk as though I'd committed a crime myself. I've done my duty all my life by the public and by the law. I'm not God. I didn't make things right or wrong. I didn't make the law. There's nothing on my head. I don't owe any man the scrap of future that's left to me. But then... Oh, no, Mary, you're crazy. You're just a child. You don't know anything about these things. I've done the best I could for him, and I'm done. I'm through. The law must take its course. No, you can't do that. You can't. Hey... Gotten into you. What are you driving at? What's it all about? Why? Well, I... Come on now. Let's get down to cases. What's up? I, I love him, Dad. Yeah? Yeah? Is that on the level, Mary? 
How long has this been going on? Oh, it hasn't gone on. He's never said a word to me, but... I knew, Dad. Yeah? Oh, I'm sorry if this hurts you, but... Uh... It's all right, sweetheart. You can't help that. You're not a child. You know what you're doing. Well, I... I guess that's one thing the law doesn't cover. But what will you do? Do? Well, there's only one answer to that, Mary. I'd turn the demons out of hell for you. Come on now, sweetheart. It's going to be all right. We'll see him through. Somehow. Some way. Yeah, he'll never serve another day. We can help it. And I guess we can help it. Yeah. I guess we can. Some way. Come on now. Chin up, little girl. Yes, Dad. <laughs> Warden talking. Where's Captain Gleason? He just went down to the dungeon, sir. Go down and tell him to bring up 25465 to my office. Right, sir. Thank you, Dad. All right, sweetheart. We'll get him out. We'll get him out. Some way. Went down the dungeon, too. What are you going to do about it? Well, that kid don't take no rap for me. I'm going to keep an appointment. Hey. I don't like you. What's that? You see what he's done? Yeah, I've seen him. This means a dungeon for you. All right. Let's go. All right, come on, take him out. Come on, get out. Kind of tough waiting, isn't it, sweetheart? Yes, Dad. I wish they'd hurry. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I know how you feel. Okay. I'm Nick. Throw that gun out first. 
Yeah. Get shot when I hit the open, eh, Gleason? No, nah, you won't get shot. You know me, Galloway. Well, I trust you, Brady. Here I come. Take care, please. Come on, fresh guy. I got an appointment with you. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, stay where you are. You can't get away with this kind of way. Stand back, fellow. Or you'll lose your best guard. Go on. Get back. Get back. Get back. Ah, you don't like it, do you, Squealer? No more little runch when I give it to him. Runch? You get away? Yes, I got runch, Brady. No rat ever got away from me. Do you hear that, Gleason? Now tell him, Squealer. Tell him what happened. Tell him what you done to the kid, what you done to me about that glass of beer. Tell him why you're gonna die. Here he is, sweetheart. Bob. Oh, my dear. What have they done to you? I, I'm all right. I'm all right now. Dad, I'm so happy. Yeah. Well, that's the way things break sometimes. You got to take them the way they fall. Yeah. Well now, old Boris Karloff here, he certainly does have a very sinister look about himself, doesn't he? You know, w with that gaunt face, that short, straight bangs haircut, you know, very similar to like what he wore in Frankenstein. It just seems like whether it's a horror film or a crime film, he certainly has this very sinister look where he can play very well in either genre. Now, the one scene I found a little far-fetched when he, you know, he stabs and knifes that squealer, but he doesn't get any blood on his white dinner jacket. <laughs> a little hard to picture you could knife someone to death and not get any blood that would be noticeable on a white jacket. Now, I do want to give you uh, a couple of interesting bio notes on Boris Karloff. One is, he was born William Henry Pratt, and he never ever legally changed his name. Anytime he would be signing a check, a contract, you, you know, any kind of legal document, he always signed it. William H. Pratt, or 
On a few occasions, he would sign it William H. Pratt, comma, a.k.a. Boris Karloff. But yeah, he never ever legally changed his name. The other is, you know, many of these actors that were typecast into the horror genre. Boris Karloff does have one note outside of horror. He was the voiceover narrator and the voice of the Grinch in the holiday classic cartoon, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You know, he's, he's in the opening credits. But one misconception I want to clear up, though, is that he did not sing the song, You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. No, he did not. The song was sung by, it was a voice actor named Thurl Ravenscroft. He sang the song, but because Thurl Raymondscroft, his name does not appear in the opening credits or in the end credits. He's completely uncredited. So with his name not appearing anywhere, the average viewer mistakenly assumes that Boris Karloff also sang the song. He did not. Boris Karloff only did the voiceover narration and the voice of the Grinch, but the song was sung. The song was sung by Thurl Ravenscroft. Well, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.